Today, I'm personally speaking, we welcome back Jonathan Rumi, the great actor who plays Jesus on the popular series, The Chosen. Stay with us. Welcome to Personally Speaking. I'm your host, Monsignor Jim Lasanti, and actor Jonathan Rumi joins me now. Jonathan currently stars in the popular television series, The Chosen, playing the role of Jesus. The Chosen is the first multi-season series about the life of Jesus and is the highest crowd-funded media project of all time, with more than 400 million views. When episodes one and two of season three were released in theaters, recently there was such a demand for tickets that the ticketing website crashed. The event was number three at the box office that week. The series about the life of Jesus and his disciples took the faith-based industry by storm in 2017, beginning as a tiny crowd-funded Christian TV show, now to a global phenomenon. Season three is currently streaming for free on Angel.com and on the Chosen app. One of the main reasons for the popularity of the series is the portrayal of Jesus by Jonathan Rumi and the people he's surrounded by. Jonathan is also starring in a new film, it's out in the theaters called Jesus Revolution, opposite Kelsey Grammer. Jonathan's here with us today to talk about his life, his Catholic faith and values, about the current season of The Chosen, and about Jesus Revolution. We welcome back our old friend, Jonathan Rumi. I want to thank Jonathan for coming back on our program. The last time Jonathan was here, he caught me short by asking me how many chapters of uh, The Chosen I'd seen. I'd seen none. And then his People from all over the world emailed me to say, watch the program. So I want to put right up front that I haven't seen Jesus Revolution yet, but I intend to. So I don't want to hear from anybody else. I'm going to see the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and Jonathan, let me start with with this this wonderful character of, of Lonnie Frisbee. Um, you know, I'm big into family of origin and how it impacts on us. Uh, mm. Did he come from a place where there was anything spiritual, religious, or was this a, a late blooming development in this wonderful man? Um, thanks for having me, Monsignor. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, Lonnie, um, Lonnie had an influence uh, in his family. I think it was his grandmother that had sort of imparted um, th this uh, this sense of of uh, a spirit of God within him from an early age. But it really didn't uh, come to fruition until the latter part of his his teenage years, middle to late teenage years where God really put his anointing on him and, and began to give him visions and, and show him that he was going to bring thousands of his generation of, of hippies to Christ. And that's exactly what he did once he connected. Uh, I mean, even before he connected with Pastor Chuck Smith, who, who uh, he meets in, in the film, who was the head of Calvary Chapel at the time, which was a church that was kind of, you know, dying in a way. And, mm -hmm. um, and Lonnie had started like ministering to people. And, and uh, once he connected with Chuck, uh, they say it was like nitro met glycerin and they, they, their, this chemistry they had just kind of exploded into this movement where thousands of kids started coming to church. Most of them were runaways um, coming off of drugs, looking for meaning and purpose in their life. And, uh, and Lonnie helped them realize that the thing that they were searching for was, was Christ. And so that's that's when this really kind of uh, catapulted this this movement in the late 60s, early 70s. Now, you know, and I know the Jesus Revolution took place like about 50 years ago. And I'm wondering, in light of 50 years of uh, a relativistic morality, far fewer mm -hmm. people go into institutional religion, uh, people right. talking about being spiritual but not religious. Could something like this, where a guy of great charisma like Lonnie and then someone like uh, the pastor getting together with his intellectual understanding of the Bible, could people come together now and make a movement like the one we discover in Jesus' revolution? I think we're seeing it now, Monsignor. Like, if you look at what ha what's happening in, at Asbury University in, in, in Kentucky, um, mm -hmm. and uh, and then these, these um, you know, uh, tangent universities all over the country, there, there are movements of revival all over the place. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's like these little, these little pockets of fires are just you know, uh, starting to light up. And I think it's only a matter of time before we're in a, a 
a full scale cultural revival, um, spiritually led, of course, by the Holy Spirit, and uh, and and seeing essentially a, a repeat of uh, of what had happened uh, fifty years ago. For our, our listeners and watchers, Jonathan Rumi hails from uh, beautiful Long Island, where I, I have a parish. I mention that because another great actor from Long Island is a woman named Margaret Colin. Uh, and maybe this speaks to your point about uh, a renewal and, and y- young people getting excited by the spirit. Uh, Margaret uh, starred in things like Independence Day and uh, Three Men and the Baby, a whole bunch of movies. But I mention her because she's also gone before Congress to testify on behalf of the uh, preborn child. Mm. When, I, when I saw recently that you had been down to the March for Life, I was intrigued. But it also reminded me that when I started going to that, most of the people marching years ago were like my parents' age. And now I looked at the literally hundreds of thousands of young people there. And I thought, teenagers. this is so amazing. You know, you, teenagers, kids from grammar school, high school, uh, and of all religions and backgrounds and stuff. And But I got to ask you, I, as I wondered with Margaret, too, you know and I know that in your business, uh, you're, you're not on the side that's popular or politically correct when you stand with the unborn. Where, where did the process of courage come from to say, may not be a good career move, but it's something I feel I'm called to do? Like six feet away from where I'm sitting right now. Um, I, I literally had committed to this um, nominally uh, or, the, you know, um, uh, ideologically, but I didn't quite know I'd never been to a march. I hadn't quite invested in that, um, the idea of, of like what it would mean politically. Mm. Um, I, I, of course, am, am on the side of, of, of life. Yeah. And uh, when, you know, when um, the offer came to me to appear, um, you know, my publicist and I talked about it and, and we thought it would be, you know, there, there would be some value of me being there, but I didn't actually think I was going to um, talk about the things with the specificity that I said. Yeah. And as we got closer and closer, um, and so going into it, you know, my approach is like, well, I, I want to write something that that is relatable to the theme, but I, I don't think that I, it's just as you were saying, for the reasons you mentioned, um, it, it's probably not a good idea professionally for me to throw my ring into that hat full on. And I talked to a few other friends in the business, some of whom are very well known um, as actors uh, about their thoughts and and their experiences and some of the backlash they had received as a result of participating in, in this, um, in this, in this uh, effort. And um, so I came away with like, okay, I'll, I'll just, what my talk will be something that is relatable, but I won't, put you know a, a fine point on it and as i got closer and closer and this is months ago i had committed i i couldn't think of a single thing to write i was trying i had ideas and, and and topics and every time i sat down to write nothing would happen and i was starting to <laughs> get a little panicked um especially when when um uh, all of a sudden now it's, it kept getting announced and then I saw the people tweeting it and like people in, 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 in um, politics, politicians were starting to talk about it and then mention my name. And I'm like, uh oh, what have I done? And then I, <laughs> I, st- I, st- I literally started to panic. And, and then so I, I, uh, I, j- I basically got on my knees again and I just said, OK, Lord, you, you got to help me here because I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And he and I, I felt uh, it wasn't an audible voice, but I just I felt this him say to me, "You know what you have to do. You know what I want you to do." And I started to get emotional about it because I knew that was what he was calling me to do, and I didn't want to do it, and I was afraid, and I was full of fear, and I thought like, "What's what's this going to mean? What's this going to mean?" And 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 the whole time he's like, "I got you. I got you. You're going to be fine." And once I accepted that, like I couldn't write fast enough. It's it just, fl- oh. it just, I didn't have to think. It just started pouring out of me. Yeah. And then uh, the night, I mean, the night before I was writing is rewriting. So I was literally right. rewriting the night before I got some input to uh, when I learned how many kids were going to be there, I got some input that led me to tweak it just slightly to address all these kids. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that morning, um, I, you know, there was a couple of things I just did on the fly, for instance, you know, recommending praying the rosary that just kind of came to me as I was walking on stage. 
And uh, so I guess that was the blessed mother kind of giving her two cents. Don't forget to say this, you know, <laughs> yes, mother. Um, and uh, and so yeah, and I I um I I delivered the the talk, the speech, or whatever, and and it seemed to go over really well and seemed to resonate, especially with young people. And and uh, I I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't hesitate to do it again. And yeah. and I feel like. You know, it's every step of the, the my journey, whether it's been in my career or now in terms of the social activism, um, has been guided by God, um, and the fear has been vanquished the minute I just let it go and give it to Him. Isn't that great, God? That's wonderful. I got another great example of surrendering and finding peace in that surrender. You know, in in playing Lonnie or in playing Jesus, you have these two guys who are remarkably good, and and you play goodness really well, Jonathan. I mentioned that because I was surprised when I did some looking back on your career to find out that somewhere along the line, you also played John Wilkes Booth. So I got to ask you, I I know you're an actor, but what's more fun to be a goodness personified or to play a guy who had a lot of evil in his heart? Um, You see, that's the thing. Um, People that are generally evil don't think of themselves as evil. They're, they're, They're not even aware, many of them, of the evil nature of their thoughts. John mm-hmm. Wilkes Booth was an example of a man who thought he was saving his country. Yeah. He thought he was fighting tyranny because one of the reasons was that they were trying to abolish uh, slavery. Mm-hmm. And slavery was responsible for so many, uh, so much of the trade in the South at the time. Yeah. And if that was taken away in his mind, the South was going to go broke. And here was this president out to destroy the South. So he had to defend his country. And the papers of the time, I mean, they so much as suggested somebody ought to take out President Lincoln. And he when he read that, he's like, well, then that's what I have to do. And he went and did it. And then the next day when it happened, they completely vilified him and took the the, the other side of the coin and just said, how could anyone do this? And he was so dumbfounded. He was so confused. Like, wh- what do you mean? Yeah. You know, and, and fortunately, he spent the, his, the end of his days. I think he had he broke his he broke his leg and and right. he was hiding out. And, and uh, it just, I mean, it, it just did not end well for him at all. But he honestly thought he was doing the right thing. So um, for me, that's that's what I had to play. Right. Is that right. this man is a threat like Lincoln in John Wilkes Booth's eyes was the evil one. So I'm the good guy. He's the yeah. bad guy. So we shouldn't believe what we read in the papers. Jonathan Rumi is our guest. Jonathan, um, one of the things I'm struck by is I'm a pastor of a parish, 3,000 families. I can't go anywhere to a deli, to a diner where somebody doesn't come up to the table to talk. And I'm just a priest, a pastor in a Long Island parish. I read recently that this thing that shows him there have been 400 million hits. My question for you, Jonathan Rumi, when he's not playing Jesus, how in the world do you create the space in your life to even have a personal life? Um, grace of God allows me to do that. Number one, to, uh, to an extent where, uh, you know, yeah, I have to, I have to do things a little bit differently now. Um, my life is impacted. I can't quite participate in certain things publicly like I used to, um, especially with church, which has been the hardest thing because it, it just, it becomes a different thing and, and, and it becomes, uh, an opportunity for for people to want to ask you for things and, and, uh, or, or just scheduling. Like if you, you plan to be a, a certain place from this time to this time, and maybe you, you plan for a couple of minutes just to say hello to a friend or two. Now it's like, I've got to like triple that, you know, and, and I might not even get to do the things I want to do or see the people that I want to see. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's, it's part of it. It's part of it. It's what, it's part of what God's called me to do. So I, I kind of have to make peace with it and and just sort of offer it up and um, know that, uh, you know, the things that I used to do uh, were part of a season of my life that is now sort of in the rearview mirror. And now God's presented me with a different season and a different opportunity to connect with um, new people, um, people that uh, kind of have experienced the kinds of things that I'm experiencing now, uh, specifically in the form of, of celebrity um, but then with with the character of Jesus, it becomes I would imagine it's, it's almost like I would what I would imagine 
the the attention being a priest is like because people are asking you to pray with them and yeah. you know obviously i i don't have any sacramental powers as a, as a lay person but um people still i mean i had a woman once approach me at um an event at a stadium where she she brought her son uh in a wheelchair who had cerebral palsy and it was you know severe or advanced i don't know quite what the technical terminology is but he couldn't speak um but he could recognize and 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 make sound and and so they were both huge fans and you know when he saw me he kind of you know his face lit up and uh and she cited her favorite episode of the chosen as being when the um the the, the paralytic was lowered through the roof but instead of saying paralytic she said the man with cerebral palsy oh i thought oh yeah and and i didn't know where quite where she was going with this but i had an idea like is she going to ask me to to do something and she said wouldn't it be great if god healed my son as well like that and i i, I didn't know if that's what she was wanting from me and i said it would be amazing yeah i don't have that gift unfortunately but i i would love to pray with you and your son and yeah. she's like yeah that would be great and so we did and we prayed and i thanked her and i hugged him and then i walked away and i just burst into tears because for a moment i felt like i had failed on some way but but i know that i didn't i just i, I might have even succeeded in just being present to her you know that that's the thing that i can give i can't give much else other than myself my time and my energy but uh but it it, it can uh it can really challenge you man you know sure. it's uh, Sometimes it's it's a little tough to, to, to be in that situation. But um, yeah, when, when Jonathan Rumi spoke at March for Life, one line that stayed with me was you saying, I play Jesus. I'm not Jesus, but I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm sure yeah, people only on TV, <laughs> only on TV. Now, uh, Jonathan, a follow up uh, from our last conversation, because it, it touches on what you're doing now, whether it's in Jesus Revolution or the Chosen. You said last time, and I love that people, you know, they call him the devil, they call him Satan. But you said, you know, the enemy as this thing gets more and more successful, namely the chosen and now Jesus revolution, the enemy plays so many tricks and tries to get at you in so many ways. Um, yeah. Have you since then, a couple of years ago when we did that interview, have you found a way to better combat the challenges of the enemy? I just I have to pray more and I try to go to mass more and go to confession and receive the sacraments and, and, uh, and just surround myself with people and resources to to uh, to fortify my spirit, you know. And the word does that. Um, music does that. Worship music and and just really kind of connecting to to fellow Catholics and Christians that um, that love God and and just create that sort of environment for me, you know, in my social life as well as you know in my public life. Jonathan Rumi is our guest, and many of you know him from The Chosen, but now we'd like you to know him from a great movie called The Jesus Revolution. Who's the audience for Jesus Revolution? Who do you want to go and see this, and what are they supposed to get out of it? Oh, man. I mean, it, I mean, it sounds like a, a a marketing tactic, but I have to say everyone because of the, the, the people that are represented in the film. So there's different generations. There's There's like gen z millennials gen x boomers they're all represented as major characters in the film everybody goes through something and everybody will be able to relate to somebody in this film um and and that's why i think even in the test uh screenings and in the previews we've had at universities um at, at uh, other schools at churches that it's been just unanimously uh, uh received with with such enthusiasm um which is which is greatly encouraging to all of us who, who helped make the film so i think uh you, you don't even have to be i mean it's not i wouldn't call it like a, a religious film even it's it's this historical drama about this spiritual movement that that happened in the 70s and people of no faith or and have watched this and come out of the theaters crying you know like wow like there's something here and to me it's this thing that unifies, you know, the chosen and and Jesus revolution is the presence of the spirit in the making of the film, uh, in the experiences I had before shooting, during shooting, after filming, um, and the same thing with the chosen. It's like the, I feel like God has truly anointed these two projects that I just happen to be in um, mm. to be able to reach more people and to get people. I mean, we had we had multiple 
actual baptisms on the set of Jesus Revolution. <laughs> I mean, there was a woman on, like, she came up to me as we're filming and wanted me to literally baptize her. And, you, you know, and I did. And I did as, as, a, as a Christian with that right. authority from God. You know, we I, I just baptized her in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, 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 uh, and then off to the side, we had background actors who w went to one of the other pastors that were on set. And there was like a, a line of people waiting to get baptized. Oh. I mean, when does that when does that happen? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> right. So, so God, God's been just working in incredible ways in um, the media that I've been attached to. And I'm just so grateful for it. Now, I promise I'm going to wrap this up, but because we're about to enter into the mystery, the wonderful time of Lent, uh, you're doing something special and you're inviting people to join you about Lent and how to be renewed during Lent. What's that all about? Yeah. So I, I, um, I'm a narrator for uh, the app Hallow, which is okay. the largest uh, Catholic Christian prayer and meditation app in the world. Um, and this Lent, starting on, on um, uh, Ash Wednesday, we will be reading from the imitation of Christ. And when I say me, I'm talking about myself and Jim Caviezel. And then uh, throughout the challenge, we'll also have, um, it's a 40 day challenge uh, every day in Lent. Uh, we'll also have Mark Wahlberg joining us on Fridays for uh, fasting, uh, almsgiving. There'll be uh, a couple of special uh, religious folk that are uh, involved as well. Um, you know, we're dealing with uh, almsgiving. And so it's going to be probably, I mean, for me as a, as a narrator, it's been one of the most powerful meditations I've ever narrated for, for the app. So uh, I, I, it's going to be an extraordinary lens. So I hope people can down, you can download it for three months for free. If you go to hallow.com slash Jonathan, it's a free discount code, uh, just hallow.com slash Jonathan, and you can download the app for free and then pray with us for 40 days and, and, uh, hopefully make it part of your, uh, your personal, uh, prayer habits. I want to thank Jonathan Rumi for being with us. I hope the many, many people who I know and love, the Chosen, will also give a chance to Jesus Revolution. Uh, the little bits I've seen of it, it looks fascinating. I did think, Jonathan, that you needed a haircut when I saw it, but I realize you're not playing the same character as, as the Chosen, yeah. but you're playing yeah. this hippie character. But your Lonnie yeah. is wonderful, and I want people to see it. And I just thank you for everything you're doing, Jonathan. We're praying for you. We love you. And we're so proud that he's a Long Island guy. Thank you so much, Jonathan, and we'll see you again. Thank you, Monsignor. God bless you. You know, some time ago, I got together with an old friend from Long Island, Anthony Whitfield and his wife, Becky. They're now based in California. Uh, he's a, a dynamic and creative artist, but uh, he knows from both his time on Long Island, Anthony, as well as living in Los Angeles, Jonathan Rumi for a long time. So I had to ask him the question because he's known Jonathan so many years. Uh, has he changed? You know, this enormous success, this popularity, uh, do you find a different man? And he said, happily, no. That Jonathan is now what he always was, an approachable guy, a kind man, someone who is uh, grateful for every good gift, uh, who appreciates that every grace we receive comes from above. Uh, it was good to hear from a guy like Anthony, his wife, Becky, people who have known this man, Jonathan Rumi, for a long time, that uh, he hasn't altered the path of his life. It's been altered by his success, to be sure, but that he remembers who he is, he remembers what he stands for, what he believes in, and what a wonderful thing that is to know that we have a, an actor who hasn't allowed his craft to go to his head, but has remained Jonathan Rumi, a good son, good person, good Christian, good Catholic, good guy. He's involved, too. For those of you who don't know it, you might want to go online and, uh, and check out something called Catholics in Media. Uh, he's been on the board of directors for that organization, and it is just what it says. It's uh, an organization to encourage Catholics to be in media. You know, I, I deal with people sometimes who say, I don't go to the movies, I don't watch TV, because there's so much stuff that's uh, not in, in line with our faith. But I, I like what people like Jonathan Rumi do. They they are Catholics in media. They're in the media because if we surrender the field, you know, if we say, well, the media is so bad and so uh, uh, counterintuitive to everything we believe, then we're really giving it over to people who are, in so many cases, promoting a message that's not our own. So I think it's really important that uh, people in all walks of creative life, like Jonathan Rumi, make sure that they participate in the life of media to be another voice, a voice of hope, uh, a voice of, of spirituality, a voice that says there's nothing to be afraid of in talking openly about the things of God. I'm so glad he's involved in Catholics and media. And if you want to know more, just go online and look up Catholics and media, another place where Jonathan Rumi makes a great contribution to being both a great actor and also a wonderful, wonderful person of faith. I'd like to thank Jonathan Rumi for being with us once again. You know, when we had him on a few years ago, 
Uh, I, I was not familiar with The Chosen. I had heard that he played Jesus in The Chosen and that it was a, an amazing series. I have since that time watched the series, and it is amazing in a whole unique and wonderful way to come to know Jesus. Uh, and for the same reason, I'll, I'll want to see uh, the Jesus Revolution and see what Jonathan does with that particular role as, as Lonnie Frisbee. But what I love about talking about anything with Jonathan is that uh, there's no way to separate out his wonderful work as an actor. He's an extraordinary actor, which is why so many people are drawn to his portrayal of Jesus or Lonnie Frisbee in this new movie. But also the goodness of the man always comes across when you talk to him and the fact that he is deeply, wonderfully, spiritually rooted. He knows who he is. He's he's uh, intimately close to his good BFF, Jesus, and, uh, and Mother Mary, and it comes across in everything he says and does. I love it when a person doesn't apologize for who they are as a person of faith. Over the years of doing this program, I've had so many people who were, in fact, Catholic Christians, but who were, were very apologetic about it. I mean, some amazingly big people who, nonetheless, successful as they were, uh, always tried to dance away from, well, this is what I believe, but I don't want in any way, you know, uh, put it out there and, and, and make anyone feel uncomfortable. And, and Jonathan doesn't make anybody feel uncomfortable, but Jonathan Rumi loves his God, loves the mother of God, loves his faith. And, and is unapologetic in talking about it. And it, it filters into everything he says, everything he does, whether it's making a movie like Jesus Revolution or being Jesus in the Chosen or attending and speaking at the March for Life in Washington, D.C. What I'm saying is he's a man who has integrated, as we all are called to, the wonderful job of being uh, uh, good at what you do. He's the terrific actor, but also letting every aspect of life be touched by the gift and the grace of knowing that we belong to God. And Jonathan knows that at every step of his life and success and challenge, he knows it. And it comes across so well when you get to talk to him like we did today. So again, once again, thank you to Jonathan Rumi. You know, last time we had him on a couple of years ago, it was the most popular of our shows ever watched because so many people are drawn to him and to the message of The Chosen. And now I hope to the message of this great movie, Jesus Revolution. So thanks to Jonathan Rumi and to our listeners and watchers. Please uh, watch The Chosen and, and watch Jesus' Revolution and come to know this extraordinary man, not just as an actor, but as a, a man of true and abiding and wonderful faith, a man of true joy. Thanks for being with us and personally speaking. We'll see you next time. As we end today's program, I want to thank you all for being with us. If you need to contact me, you can reach me at personally speaking podcast at gmail.com. Any shows you want to see or watch, you go to YouTube search on the personally speaking with my singing Jim Asante. Watch the shows and please hit like and subscribe. We're also on Facebook at personally speaking with my singing Jim Asante. We're also now on Instagram at personally speaking podcast. I'm privileged to serve as host and executive producer personally speaking. Our producer is Lisa Jandovitz. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll be with you again next time on personally speaking. <laughs>